Yo, Jonathan here, and I feel like for a lot of us when we were younger, we saw these futuristic things in TV shows and in movies that we thought would exist by now, but don't. This, however, feels like it's straight out of the future, except it's not some concept or prototype. It's real, it exists, you can grab it now, and it works extraordinarily well. Enter the Hypershell Pro X, which is the world's first outdoor exoskeleton, and for a reason that I still haven't figured out yet, I decided to see if I could do 30,000 steps while wearing one. First, what the heck is an exoskeleton? It is a wearable device that augments, enables, assists, or enhances motion, posture, or physical activity through mechanical interaction with force applied to the user's body. So effectively, these are like robot legs. You can wear them on a hike, on a bike, on a trike, on a white psych, in all seriousness, and Dr. Seuss aside, these are crazy cool, and somehow we got a John Cena heel turn and an exoskeleton before GTA 6. I do quickly want to thank Hypershell first for just letting me try these and supporting the channel because when they initially reached out, I was like, what? and then the deeper I looked and saw exactly what this thing could do, I was like, hell yeah. So for as much tech that is packed inside this, it is surprisingly lightweight. And to be honest, it really kind of just gets out of the way. Stupid sexy Flanders. It comes with this really cool case, which is always a bonus, and then two swappable batteries. So when you're pushing this thing and run out of power, you can simply just throw in a fresh one. Each battery weighs just 400 grams, and depending on how you use it, you can get up to 17.5 kilometers of use. It also packs 65 watt fast charging, which will get you zero to 50 in 35 minutes, zero to 75 in 55 minutes, or zero to 100 in 88 minutes. Shout out Doc and Marty. I think for me, that is where the 30,000 step challenge came from. I wanted to see what all I could do before I exhausted both batteries, and spoiler alert, the batteries won. This claims it'll give you a 40% boost in leg strength, it'll offset up to 30 kilograms of weight that you're carrying, and reduce your physical exertion by up to 30%. So with all of that in mind, for those 30,000 steps, I don't wanna just walk because that would be kinda lame. So for this challenge that I set up for myself, I wanted to pack a bag full of video gear with a tripod, hike a five mile trail and get a shot at the top, run a mile immediately after, test its flexibility with some basketball, take it onto a treadmill, and then finish things off with an incline walk. Once you're fitted properly, and it does do a really nice job of walking you through that within the app, there are three main modes and an experimental fitness mode, which is ridiculous in the best possible way. Kicking things off with eco mode. This is what you're gonna use for moderate activities. There is adaptive motion recognition that is pretty brilliant and it is really quick. So it'll recognize walking, uphill, upstairs, gravel, running, race walking, shout out Hal, downhill, downstairs, cycling, and mountain. One of my favorite things though is that little guy right there. I'm gonna name him Harold and he is pretty much there just to instantaneously react and let you know whether you're idle, walking, running, or even doing things like an incline. It's pretty awesome. It knows exactly when I'm idle, what would qualify as running. <laughs> five miles an hour running. From there, we have hyper mode, which is every bit what it sounds like. This is for intense activities, and it really gives you a boost to the point where you can hear it working like something straight out of Iron Man. Transparent equals no assistance, so this is gonna get you back to just your legs and no robotics, and it really is a trip going from assistance to nothing. As cool as that app is though, they really engineered the balls out of this thing to where you have full control and you can switch between those modes with just the unit itself, which is kind of important assuming you're on a mountain where you probably don't want to be messing with an app. For that fitness mode, everything that we've talked about thus far has been assistance and this is actually the opposite where it gives you dynamic resistance. That is that kind of quicksand feeling. So in the instance where I have a weighted vest, I'm getting resistance everywhere. So it just feels like I'm being pushed down and I can see this being really helpful for sports. I've been so locked in trying to recover from everything that has happened over the last couple of years. So I've used this on walks and then in more extreme cases like stairs, something that I couldn't do a couple months ago. Beyond that, there was a period where I really couldn't do any kind of cardio for over a year because of shingles and how it impacted my vagus nerve. My resting heart rate would get locked like at 110 and any kind of little movement would shoot it up past 160. It was crazy. 
So as I've made progress, I've been able to push things more and more and more. And a huge goal of mine is to get my resting heart rate down. This has been extremely helpful for that because yes, it does assist you. It does take some of the load off, but it is not taking that cardio away you absolutely 100% still feel it. You're just able to push a little further. So I've talked enough at this point, challenge time. First up, The Climb. Great song. I knew I wanted to get what was presumably going to be the hardest thing out of the way first. I wanted to do it early before the sun really kicked in and made things hard. And to ice this cake, this is something that I hadn't done in years. In terms of what I packed, I had a MacBook Pro, FX6, lens, tripod, audio interface, and a microphone. Also quickly wanna give a quick shout out to my good friend, Jock Slade, who let me borrow his FX6 for this project. In full transparency, that FX3 from last year, I had to sell it just to keep things moving. I know a lot of people will assume that things are all rainbows and unicorn, but it's still a challenge every single day. I think thankfully because of all the work that I've been putting in prior to this, that it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it was still, absolutely challenging. The Hyper Sherlock's kind of just feels like two little friends that are pushing and guiding your legs, not really doing everything similar to someone spotting you or just getting you through that rep and just taking you a little further. I would say at that 1.5 mile mark, I started to feel a little better about things, but it was still kicking my ass. The sun kicked in a bit more, heart rate was going up, and by then, I was working up a pretty decent sweat. Similar to what I was talking about earlier, at this point, my legs felt great, and that was kind of the least of my problems. It was the cardio that was really the challenging part. At this point, I knew I was getting closer and closer, and not too much long after, I made it to the top. So we did it, kinda. The worst part, I think, is at least over in terms of elevation and the most challenging part of the hike. A couple quick thoughts. One, it feels good to sit down, and two, I didn't realize how much weight the backpack added until I took it off and sat down, and it just feels like I'm so much lighter now, so just being able to use this alongside the hike, not only is it assisting with your legs and the actual effort of walking and hiking and ascending, but it's gonna take a load off the weight as well. Pretty decent sweat so far. I think because I know the rest of this hike is going to be more downhill than anything, I'm gonna to try to make up some time on the overall pace and see how that goes. Similar to what I was just talking about with the backpack and not realizing how much weight it added, I had a similar thought or moment during the hike where I was checking battery life, Noticing that if you lowered that assistance, it would increase the battery life. But once I got down to nothing, to where there was no assistance, I really felt the difference. Note to myself, you can mess with the amount of power, which will dramatically increase battery life. But just for a quick second, going down to, to nothing, oh my God. You notice it's helping during, but then when you take it off, Holy shit. This is legit one of the coolest things I think I've ever got a chance to check out. Yes, there's so much tech and it's advancing at a rapid rate these days, but a lot of the times it still feels very stagnant. And this seems not only really cool, but extremely helpful and practical at a relatively reasonable price when you factor everything in. That's all she wrote. Let's finish. Now in a normal situation, I wouldn't be out there like a dummy setting up the tripod, getting all the shots. That absolutely added to the overall time. So on the way down, I wanted to see if I could make up a bit of that lost time by potentially running. It was definitely challenging because of the backpack and the tripod, but aside from that, I was able to run a pretty good chunk of it. The latter half of this hike is mostly downhill, so it definitely seemed to fly by a lot faster. And before I knew it, I had made it all the way down to the end. Step one complete. Part one done. That was about 12,500 steps, so right around what I was hoping for. It was definitely, I don't wanna say easy, easier than I thought. And it definitely added a ton of assistance. And as I mentioned, once you kind of take it away, that's when you really notice how much it's helping. The battery died just as I was finishing up. So it essentially lasted the entire hike. So I got a whole battery to rip through next. From there, I was on to challenge two, where I would head to the track and see if I could run a mile straight after that hike. I thought this was going to be easier than it was because maybe I'd be warmed up, I'd be on adrenaline, but I think that short drive from the trail to the track, my legs really just started to tighten up. 
I think currently a challenge for myself is to get a mile sub eight minutes, but I knew with this one that wasn't going to happen. So I just wanted to A, do it entirely without stopping and then see if I could do it under 10 minutes. Honestly, this was extremely hard to the point where I would say the first and second lap through, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to make it the entire time. I didn't wanna give up that quickly, so I pushed and I pushed, and I think I made it until that last fourth lap where I took like maybe a 10 to 30 second walking break. You could really feel the hypershell kick in and just give you that little boost and push that you needed. Once I gathered myself from there, I made one final push and much to my surprise, I got this thing around nine minutes. Nine minutes with the stairs. I'll take it. Damn. I thought that was gonna be easier, just feeling like I would write off some momentum and adrenaline, but I think just that little gap of getting from the hike to here, legs tightened up big time. So yeah, I mean the legs, especially with the hyper shell feels good. It just, it doesn't assist the cardio kind of in the sense of you're doing a little bit less work, but what a cool tool just to build up to a place that maybe you wouldn't have gotten before. I was so gassed at this point, but I knew I wanted to get a few more steps in. So I did a couple cool down laps followed by a walk outside in between what would be the next challenge, basketball. First, I just love basketball and I would say it's probably my favorite kind of cardio because I'm just not the biggest fan of pure running. What I continue to notice as I use the Hypershell Pro X more and more is how responsive it was to where it felt like I could really move around and maneuver. So that's where I really wanted to test things out with basketball. Initially, I just got out on the court and got a few shots up just to see how things felt. It felt great. From there, I wanted to push things a little further and just move a bit more. And then also just bring some life back into my legs. Honestly, things felt great. And throwing that fitness resistance mode on for a few minutes, this is a really cool way to train. There weren't a ton of people there at this point in the day, but luckily I was able to get in a quick two on two. Aside from my legs just being blasted, things felt really good. It gave me that boost that I needed, so I was able to get in a couple decent drives. Even with the assistance, my legs were pretty toast, so I didn't take many long range shots, but happened to make one. And as good as I felt out there, I wanna give a shout out to Will because he was cooking. Will at the buzzer. At that point, basketball was over whether I wanted it to be or not, and that put me about 23,000 steps for the day. I knew I didn't wanna leave the gym without getting to at least 25,000 steps, so next I hopped onto the treadmill. Again, I was pretty gassed, so this was mostly walking, but I also, at the same time, wanted to get it over with, so I tried to run a bit. Hands down, 5,000%, the Hypershell helped me push through that because without it, at that point, I don't think I'm running. Even with that help though, I could feel my heart rate starting to kick in and really start to pump. So I slowed things down. And man, I gotta say, just sitting here, walking, pushing through, knowing that I'm getting closer, definitely made me reflect on things. So at this point, if you can look closely, what I'm doing here is taking my eyes and trying to hold a gaze from side to side, right to left, left to right. I'm also looking as far away as I possibly can because I've had such a hard time with divergence and knowing where I would go into the gym just to try and find some sort of answers or improvement. I just remember not being able to look or focus on things further away. It's not perfect by any means now and I still struggle with holding my gaze to the right because of that sixth nerve palsy, but it's so much better. All that aside though, treadmill done, and this put me at about 26,000 steps for the day. At this point of the day and into the challenge, I got some food in, rested for like 30 minutes because I also wanted the sun to cool down just a bit because it's been extraordinarily hot out here. I knew I didn't wanna wait until nighttime or evening because I could feel the tired set in more and more. Again, with this last part of the challenge though, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just doing a flat walk and made sure most of it was on an incline. Normally 4,000 steps to finish this challenge would be fairly simple, but these steps felt like forever. At one point, I thought I was done, went to check things and realized I had just a bit more. Quick update, I was really hoping to be done, but we have about 13, 1400 more steps to go, so. Oh, okay. 
thank Korean Jesus. We are done. I am French toast. Man, these steps. Not Allison. Shingles, anything that's making someone out there not feel great. You know, it was a silly challenge, but just to think about everything today and the retrospective thoughts and knowing that just a few months ago, it was a struggle just to do a singular mile. And, you know, I'm absolutely gonna pay the price for this tomorrow, but it's cool, man. It looks like Hypershell won because we still got about 36% left on that second battery. So the entire freaking day, the hike, basketball, walking, the treadmill, and this last walk, which I didn't think I was gonna sweat again, but here we are. We did it. And also this is four days after because I've tried to record this video each of the last three days, but I was just so cooked that I couldn't. Again, yes, the Hypershell gives you assistance. It takes a load off of you. Could I have done that without it? Probably not, but either way, I am feeling it right now. My gosh. Outside of everything that I've covered so far, I think what I get excited for is just seeing a lot of comments on other Hypershell videos where people who maybe have trouble walking are older or are recovering from an injury can use this to assist them. And I think that's also incredible. Through my physical therapy, I've got a chance to meet some pretty incredible people, including Danny. He went from a place of not being able to walk pretty much at all to working his ass off. So to see this helping him was awesome. When you first put it on and there's nothing, it still, it helps stabilize you for one. And when you put it on the eco mode, I can feel that and I can just stroll. Then when the next mode, it makes you go, but you, you feel like you're more in control because of the fact that this is really helping you stabilize. And even the faster mode, it's the same thing. You, it's like you get kind of get into that rhythm and you're okay. <laughs> I might as well run up the stairs. I'm serious. It felt like I could like shit. <laughs> That was awesome. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting. I had a blast making this video, kind of, but I would love to work with Hypershell again. So if you guys want to do me a favor, head over to their Instagram or even just on this video, leave a comment letting me know what your favorite thing about this was. Thank you so much. This is Jonathan and I will catch you guys later.